right, welcome back to the second video that I've made on State Machines. Sorry that I haven't uploaded any videos in the meantime. I'm a little busy with school. Uh, so right now I'm working actually at NASA Jet Propulsion Lab as co-op, so I have a little bit more free time to make these types of things. I saw that my other video got like a thousand views, which is pretty crazy, so this one will be better. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So right now I'm going to go over the problem statement of this video. With the skills that you've learned from the last video, we can now make a device which will detect, warn, and remind a user when they forget key items in the morning. Additionally, this device can remind users to put key items back when they return to the house. This is not only a useful project, but a great way to demonstrate and practice state machines. Here's the bill of materials that I used for this project. It's not very complex, but you're going to need two ultrasonic sensors, multicolor LED, a piezoelectric speaker, an Arduino, uh, three 220 ohm resistors for the LED, wires, and duct tape. All right, so now I'm gonna go through the device and its components. So here is Arduino, here's a multicolor LED, speaker in the back, the first ultrasonic, and the second ultrasonic over here. So first, I'm gonna put the object that I don't wanna forget in the morning right in front of the first ultrasonic. So the green light signifies that it knows that the wall is there. And as I try to leave, it triggers the speaker telling me to take it. So I'm going to grab it. It's going to switch to blue, signifying that it knows that I took it. As I leave, it will turn to purple, telling me that it knows that I've left the room and will be waiting for me. And as I come back, it will turn to yellow, signifying that it, the device knows that I've entered the room. And in a few seconds, it will trigger, telling me to put the object back. All right, so now I put the object back, switches the green, everything's good. Uh, something important to note is that it will always go back to the initial stage whenever the, the uh, object is back. So let's say it goes blue, goes back to green, goes to blue, so I go to purple, I put my thing back, there we go, it's always green. So that's really important for the logic of the finite state machine and something that you'll have to remember. So here's the state machine for the device. The starting state is the resting state, which is denoted by the zeroth state. This is when the device waits to detect that the first ultrasonic has been triggered by the object leaving. In this state, the device will beep if the user passes the second ultrasonic by leaving the room. This is to remind the user to take the object when leaving. Once the object is taken, the device will transition to the first state, which is timer 1. In this state, all that happens is that the first timer starts. The first timer matters for state 2, and will be discussed shortly. The 1 equal equal 1 in the transition simply represents that the transition occurs by default. In state 2, the device is in a detection phase. Using timer 1 from before to 5 minutes past, the device will transition to the alarm state. However, there will be a transition to state 3 if the second ultrasonic is triggered by the user leaving the room. This will also start timer 2. Timer 2 does not have its own distinct phase, and all it does is make sure that there is no user error by making sure that there cannot be a transition from state 3 to state 4 until 5 seconds pass, in case you kind of pause before leaving a room. The third state is the waiting phase, where the user has left the room and goes about daily activities such as buying groceries or whatever. Once the user comes back into the room and passes the second ultrasonic again, there is a transition to state 4, where the third timer starts. This timer is used for state 5. Again. There's an automatic transition from state 4 to state 5 depicted by 1 equal equal 1. State 5 gives the user 10 seconds to return the object by ultrasonic 1 detecting its presence. Otherwise, there will be a transition to state 6 and the speaker will be triggered. State 6 can only be transitioned out of by putting the, putting the object back going to the zeroth resting state. All the main states, so basically not the timers, will all transition back to the resting state if the first ultrasonic detects that the object has returned. There are four main components to wiring the device. Firstly, there are two ultrasonics, a speaker and RGB LED with three 220 ohm resistors. For ultrasonic one, the trigger and echo pin go to 13 and 12 on the Arduino, while for ultrasonic two, they go to nine and eight. For the RGB LED, it goes to pins three, five, and six, and the speaker input goes to pin two. Keep in mind that ultrasonic one is what detects when your object is present, and ultrasonic two detects when you actually leave the room. So keep this in mind when you're actually setting up the device and make sure to appropriately place them. So now I'm going to briefly go over the code. So if you look at the beginning here, I'm mostly just setting up different pins for the LED and the ultrasonic sensor. 
Additionally, I'm just setting a bunch of constants for the various timers uh, and distance thresholds that the ultrasonic will keep track of. It's kind of shown here. And of course, uh, we have this variable right here, int state underscore FSM, which determines where you are in the state machine. So after that, there are three uh, main helper functions, and these kind of make the code a little more abstracted and more modular. So the first is record distance or record dist. And what this does is it measures uh, distance that the ultrasonic can see um, of an object in front of it in centimeters. So if you don't really understand how this works, you can just kind of look it up really quick. But it's just something uh, that is there. The next one is set color, which makes it easier to write the RGB LED color all in one function. So this is helpful. So you don't have to write three lines every time you want color. You just call one. And the last helper function here is beep. And this one takes the input of a delay and basically it outputs a sound and depending on the delay it changes the frequency um, of the noise so you can differentiate between different states with different frequencies next is just some setup for uh, the different pins like the ultrasonic pins and the led pins of the buzzer and then we go into the main loop right here um, basically every iteration you read uh, both ultrasonic sensors to see what type of distance you're reading. And then you go into this next function, sm underscore alarm, which is the main state machine function. So let's check that out. All right, so here we are, the state machine function. Basically takes in the distance one, distance two, which are determined from the uh, ultrasonic sensors uh, previously shown. Um, and then we go into our switch statement with state underscore fsm that I was talking about before. So here I'm just gonna go over the states and how we kind of transition what that looks like in code. So case zero, LED is green. We transition to state one, distance one from the first ultrasonic is greater than the distance one threshold, meaning the user took the object. Um, that's when we're gonna transition. However, we also wanna beep if the user tries to leave and cross by ultrasonic two without taking whatever object they wanna remember. So that's the first uh, state, and then we go to, or the zeroth state, and then we go to case one. And this is just a timer case. We just start the timer, instant transition. Case two, LED is yellow, and we want to transition back to state zero if the object is ever returned, like always. But we also send an alarm if five minutes have passed and the user has not left um, and we have not transitioned uh, to state three. So if that happens, we're going to go to state six right here and we're going to start setting the alarm. Otherwise, normal behavior, the user passes the second ultrasonic, signify they're leaving, and then send a little quick little beep here to acknowledge that we understood that the user's left, and then we need to transition to state three. When we look at state three here, the LED is purple, same scenario as always, if the object is put back, it got to go to the resting state, which is state zero. Otherwise, when the owner returns to the house, implementing the short little five second delay that I talked about before, then we're gonna transition to state four. The reason why we have this five second timer um, is in case you're taking time to leave the house, so like if you pause right in front of your doorway, that type of thing. We don't want state machine to transition when it shouldn't. Okay, and then we go to case four. It's just a timer case. Just gonna go and instantly transition. Case five, uh, right here, it outputs the orange color on the LED. And again, if you put the object back at any point, everyone's happy, state will go back to zero and rest. Otherwise, if 10 seconds pass, it's gonna transition into state six and start setting an alarm to alert the user to put the object back after. So this is kind of a situation where you come home uh, from being outside and if you don't put it back within 10 seconds, it's gonna start getting mad. So then case six, uh, set the color to red, signifying danger, uh, just angry. Uh, basically, it's gonna start beeping until you meet the threshold for distance one, meaning you put back the, uh, the object to ultrasonic sensor number one. So hopefully that was a nice example of how you can use state machines to take complex situations and abstract them into distinct states that are easy to organize and manage. So always thanks for watching and I hope to make some more videos as I have more time while I'm working. I have a couple projects that I've finished over the past couple months and I actually haven't made any videos but these are related to IoT, my own 3D off robot arm that I printed and a haptic glove to rem control remote servos. So hopefully I'll start putting out these videos soon, and yeah, peace.